الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Um, these are some questions which a brother uh, about Kant's conception of uh, morality, which a brother has asked, and I'm going to try to make. Uh, um, I'm trying to give answer to these questions as far as I. I'm able to, and I'll try to be, you know, concise and precise if possible. Uh, and I might take some of the ideas uh, later on and, you know, expand on them. But uh, in this session, I'm not um, hoping, uh, I'm not hoping to spend too much time. So try to answer the questions in a straightforward manner. Okay, so here we go. So the question is this. So according to Kant, um, God is a precondition of morality along with freedom and immortality. In what sense God is the condition for morality in his system? <laughs> in a sense, it's easy to hear answer this question but uh, uh, I'll just try it. So we understand by condition something whose absence implies absence of our, uh, an outcome. So how is God conditioned in that sense? What will happen to Kantian morality if we remove God from it? The easiest answer is that God is not the condition of morality in Kant's conception of morality. And as far as I understand it, I'm sure there are other readings. Uh, but you have asked me the question, so I don't think uh, God is the condition of morality. In fact, the very point of his philosophy is to... Um, moral philosophy is to expunge God out of uh, morality. Um, so the short answer is um, God is not the condition of morality uh, for Kant's philosophy and we if we remove God from it, nothing will happen to his philosophy. And generally there are Kantians who believe in God and there are Kantians who don't believe in God. So it's possible to, uh, it's not just possible, but historically people have understood Kant's morality in religious terms as well as non-religious terms, in theistic terms as well as atheistic terms. Okay. So since... Um, so that's, that's the answer, but I'll try to, you know, be a bit more um, elaborate and a bit more, you know, expand on my answer a bit more. Okay. So according to Kant, the so there are three concepts here, freedom, immortality, and God. Okay, so first I'll tell you what Kantian morality is as far as I understand. So, um, let's start. So, I think, um, as Kant himself says uh, in one of his works, um, uh, the supreme principle of morality is his conception of morality, supreme Of morality supreme on the phrase is the phrase is Kant's own phrase or the translation of his supreme principle of morality is autonomy um, and that's the central concept And 
generally we understand autonomy as self-governance but uh, the concept uh, the concept of self-governance was available to moral philosophers and they used it before Kant but Kant's concept of autom autonomy is beyond self-governance. It includes self-governance, in, but it's more than autonomy. In fact, um, in the specific sense in which for Kant, uh, autonomy is the supreme principle of uh, morality was actually invented by Kant himself. It didn't exist before, as Schnee would Schneewind um, has shown um, Kant actually invented the concept of autonomy in this sense. I'm going to explain it in So he he didn't just discover the concept he actually in, invented out of nothing autonomy in this sense didn't exist before. Anyway, that, that was a thought. Um, and then he based his conception of morality or conceptual laws his concept of morality in terms of this newly coined or invented concept of autonomy. Okay, so what is autonomy then? So what is Kant's concept of autonomy? Kant's concept of autonomy in a nutshell is the claim that we, that is human beings, And I'll explain this a bit further, but each word here is important. We human beings, as rational beings, as rational beings, are a law onto ourselves. This is just a paraphrase of what Kant himself says. In other words, what Kant says is that we as rational beings have freedom and the right <laughs> to give ourselves our own laws. Obviously here he is talking about moral laws and if we can give ourselves moral laws then obviously other laws will follow. So that's uh, Kant's concept of morality. And obviously, uh, um, we are free to give our, ourselves uh, this moral law. Um, it has its condition that it should be a universal law, that is, it should be, it could be adopted by any rational beings. That's a precondition, but that's not the main uh, point at this point. 
Uh, and that's why I think it's misleading uh, when, that, when we are taught Kant in universities and philosophy departments, they focus on categorical, categorical imperative and, you know, ignore this basic thing that actually conception of morality in the first place. So autonomy is the conception that we as human beings are we human being as rational beings that's important i'll explain a bit about as rational beings and all the cate categorical imperative actually follows from the meaning of rational being are a law are a law and we are talking about moral law here onto ourselves so we we as um, human beings are free and we have a right and we are free to give uh, law to ourselves. In fact, Kant says that on this basis, this uh, conception of morality, this conception of auton autonomy, he denies that, he denies that God can give us a law. <laughs> let alone um, anybody else. Um, in fact, it would be heteronomy. It would be immoral, immoral, immorality to obey God's law in that sense. Law is heteronomy. And uh, autonomy in this sense is immorality for Khan. So this is a radical concept and this is the basis of modernity. Uh, that's why Kant is so, so important. People don't understand it. Um, I mean, don't understand it in this sense. Uh, for example, Iqbal, even Molina, uh, Abul Hassan Ali Nadvi and Sabri, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh uh, Sabri, the last Sheikh of Islam of the Ottoman Empire, he, he wrote a multi volume book and he discusses Kant. So it's important to understand Kant in this. Aimed to obeying God's moral law is actually immorality in this sense. In fact, uh, based on this conception of uh, autonomy, Kant claims that we are co-equal of gods as rational beings. Okay, so <laughs> it's not just that the concept of God is not the precondition of morality. In fact, to make a uh, concept of God precondition of morality is heteronomy in the any more immorality in the Kantian sense of the sense of the term. Okay, okay, so. Um, if autonomy is uh, morality, um, then freedom uh, or rather morality presupposes freedom. There's no doubt about that. Because autonomy presupposes freedom. So in that sense, you're right that freedom is the precondition of morality for Kant. Uh, so Kant's conception of morality actually uh, presupposes a, con a contra a causal conception of uh, freedom. 
Um, so freedom is the pre precondition of morality in this sense because it's a precondition of uh, autonomy, but uh, not God, in fact, to God. Now, one more concept which is important, which was included in our def definition of autonomy, and that's the concept of rational being. So I want to say a bit about that. When we defined um, um, Kant's conception of autonomy and and by implication his concept of morality, we were careful to say we human beings as rational beings. So for, for Kant, human beings are not co-equal of God, but human beings, as long as they are rational beings, they are uh, co-equal of God and with God, because for Kant, God is a rational being as well. So in that sense, they are co-equal. And, and they, as rational beings, they make one community with God. And if there are uh, any other rational beings other than human beings, but obviously, to the extent that human beings uh, are not fully rational beings, they, they, part of them is animal. They are not co-equal of God uh, in that respect. Um, and, uh, and that's where his concept of immortality uh, comes, but not in, the, uh, not in his conception of... Uh, human beings. So for Kant, morality morality is not uh, from human reason. Because human reason is amalgam of uh, rational reason and animal reason. But rather, morality is derived from The concept of, as Kant himself said, the concept of morality is derived from the concept of, and these are Kant's own words, is derived from the universal concept of a rational being as such. So what morality is basically derived from is pure rationality. And human beings as rational beings have the right to give themselves morality in that very since okay i think that's enough um and i might expand on these uh in uh, in 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 later sessions uh, and we we have already discussed these concepts in uh reading of Islamic Paul's reconstruction of religious thought in islam uh which is available on youtube so you can um and, uh, yeah, just to finish off, I want to say something about God and Im immortality. So when we say that God is the precondition of, uh, when you said that God is the precondition of morality, what can be said is that uh, Kant's conception of morality
requires. Requires. It's not requires the concept of God. Not the Christian concept of God or Islamic concept of God or Jewish concept, but more like a, a pseudo or a type of a Aristotelian concept of God because uh, Kant's uh, concept, uh, uh, Kant's uh, concept of morality based on the concept of uh, universal concept of uh, rational being and um, God is one such rational being because uh, it's pure rationality there's no animality in this concept of God as, Aristotle, as for Aristotle as well Aristotle's concept of God is pure rationality so you do presuppose the existence of pure rationality or universal concept of pure rationality. Um, um, but that is, that's the same thing as saying that you require freedom and autonomy uh, in, in the sense in which we explained as well. And Im immortality uh, is also not a condition of morality, but it's, uh, the concept of morality actually implies a kingdom of kingdom of end, and that in, implies uh, some sort of Im, a conception of Im, immortality. Because rational beings, if there are pure rational beings, and if there is a community of pure rational beings, then it is immortal in that sense. Because only uh, what is material, uh, what is animal, dies. Okay, so I think um, I'll just stop here. And hopefully this explains at least my conception of, um, a part of my conception of what Kant's conception of morality is, and he uh, answers some of your questions uh, from my point of view. Okay, thank you.